Perth property market update. In this video, I'll be creating a thesis, a philosophy as to why in 2023, the Perth property market will be the best performing city. But more importantly, the reasons I'm going to share with you eight chart that may completely shift your view on Perth. If you're like, oh, Perth never grows. <laughs> you know, what's going to happen to Perth? Who really buys in Perth? I have no incentive to give you this information. You can go off and buy property there yourself and make a bunch of money. Just make sure to come back and thank me. If you're interested, let's go. My name's PK and I help people build passive income through property investing using data, the property investment accelerator without needing a $15,000 buyer's agent every single time. In this channel, we talk about property, we talk about the economy, we talk about financial happiness. Let's go. This first chart, is from Little Hinges. They're a really cool company and they report on interstate activity, search activity, buying sight unseen. Now, of course, you don't need to buy a sight unseen. <laughs> I don't recommend that. And nor do you actually need a buyer's agent to buy without catching a flight interstate. But check this out. Interstate buyers, this is the dark turquoise, I think that is. It's increasing consistently. Now, I know this is Jan to June data, and I'm going to share with you the latest data in a second. But overall, it shows that interstate activity interest from Sydney, Melbourne, etc. in Perth has been gradually, gradually going up. I'll talk about the reasons why, why that's important, where they're looking, etc. as we go through the video. But I thought this was really interesting, right? This is showing that the interstate interest, local buyers are still 82% of property interests or transactions. Interstate buyers are 18%. Okay, now that is really, really big compared to, let's say, four years ago or three years ago, it was basically basically zero. It's like Perth might as well be in Scotland. You know what I mean? Now, what's really interesting is that people from overseas are really interested in Perth. International buyers, I know that seems small, 6.8%, but that's the second biggest for any location in Australia. So, you know, people are more interested in Perth property internationally than they are in even Melbourne or Brisbane, right? So this is this really, I mean, it goes to show just how much of a mark Perth is leaving both domestically and internationally but there's so much more to share. Credit goes to John Linderman for this, and I want to read you through it. This is a really powerful chart. Not only does Perth have an imminent rental supply issue, but there is a general shortage of housing stock. Because property values have not grown in the last eight years, which, by the way, is an argument that a lot of people th say to say, look, they haven't grown in the past, therefore they won't grow in the future. Stick with me if you've got that mindset. It is now far cheaper to buy an established house in Perth than to purchase a new build with similar features. Well, when as soon as this happens, established properties go up in value. The rate of new builds has reduced so much that the market has reached a turning point with not enough new dwellings listed for sale to meet buyer demand. This is the clincher. At the current rate, buyer demand, Perth only has three months of stock available on the market. Okay, and everyone's fighting tooth and nail over established properties. You can see this, a total dwellings for sale, this orange bar has come down, 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 down. Okay, so supply is getting lower and lower and lower and lower. New bills for sale is also getting lower and lower and lower. So not only is overall stock going low, new bills are, is going low as well. And that bodes for a massive, not only rental crisis, rental shortage, but also a housing shortage. And so you may say, well, PK, what about all these interest rate rises and stuff, right? I mean, that's got to hit Perth. Of course, Perth isn't immune, but check this out. With most buyers in a state of shock following seven consecutive rate rises, the impact is likely to be far less in locations where buyers need to borrow less to purchase a property, right? Because people's borrowing capacities have gone down with rate rises. It's not like they've got not enough money to meet their mortgage repayments, just they can borrow less. When we order capital cities by their median house prices, we see that Perth is ranked seventh, which is the lowest it's ever been. And the first time Adelaide has been higher than Perth. Okay, so most expensive to cheapest, least expensive. Perth has never been number seven. I mean, those of you who've been in property markets, you'll remember a time when Perth was even more expensive than Sydney. If you're new to Australia, new to property, you're probably like, like, that's a joke, right? It's not a joke. 
That's true. Now, if property works in cycles where it goes up and down and each city has its own cycle, then what that must suggest is that Sydney is right at the top of its cycle. Of course, it's crashing now. And that must suggest that Perth must be towards the lower part of its cycle recovering, okay, going up. Because otherwise, why would Perth once upon a time have been more expensive than Sydney? But now it's the opposite way, okay? So Perth has so much more in its cycle to catch up to Sydney. I'm not saying it's going to be the same as Sydney, but there's so much more upside than downside risk that it's such a safe bet buying in Perth in 2023 relative to almost any other capital city, including Adelaide, which has always been cheaper than Perth. Always remember, Perth has the second highest incomes in Australia, and now it is the only capital city where you can get positive cash flow property. So if you're an investor of which there are 2 million in Australia, 2 million out of 25 million, that's a lot of property investors, right? That's a lot of critical mass to flow or to flock towards Perth, thereby popping up its property prices. Now, one more technical thing that, you know, if you're a little bit of a <laughs> um, yeah, geek like me, you might appreciate is that over time, what happens as property or land value gets more and more expensive in a capital city, what happens is that the allotment sizes or the block sizes, they reduce, okay? Because you've got less and less supply to work with. Developers still want to make money. They just make smaller and smaller blocks of land, okay? So this is from Matusik. And what he's saying is that over these different capital cities, over the last 10 years, the actual floor area of the house has not gone backwards. Sydney has been the same. Melbourne house sizes, the actual floor area has gone up. Brisbane's gone up the most. Perth has gone down just a tiny little bit. But what's more interesting is the average allotment size. In other words, the block size, you know, 607 meter block or 405 meter square block or 800 square meter block. What's happened is Sydney has gone down 11%, down 60 meters squared on average. Melbourne has gone down similar. Brisbane's gone down huge, as well as Adelaide, almost more, actually more than 100 square meters. That's huge, right? And more than 15% at 17%. Perth has gone down the least, okay? So Perth has gone down the least. It's gone down only 37 square meters or 8%. Now this is like, oh, what's, how's this relevant, right, PK? How this is relevant is that the past has suggested that Perth has not been a great place in terms of land scarcity. Land allotment sizes haven't gone down that much. Property prices, therefore, if they work on a supply versus demand basis, which they do, property prices haven't risen in Perth as much as other capital cities because land hasn't been scarce. I mean, here's the proof. Supply equals land, right? And so what's going to happen going forward, as I shared in a chart char earlier, is that now finally Perth is experiencing its day in the sun, you know. Its heyday is coming. It's finally experiencing that supply crunch, which Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide have already experienced in the last five to 10 years. It's now Perth's time to shine. Supply down, demand up, property prices up. Now, of course, let's bring this back to this comment that I've said before around Perth having the second highest disposable incomes in Australia. Here's a really cool chart by Minnick Advisors. What this is showing since 2006 is basically three metrics. One is this pink line, which is disposable income, which is going up. You know, this is billions per quarter on an Australian basis on aggregates. This is going up, 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 okay, all the way to now. And then this is consumer spending in the green. That's going up, up, up. And you can see Australia is such a wealthy country that just slightly, this pink line seems to be getting away from this green line. That means we're just getting richer and richer, more gap between what we earn versus what we spend, which is our savings, okay? And what's happened in this COVID time is because incomes continue to go up. I mean, it was boom times, government handing out free money, but we couldn't spend it on travel or other types of discretionary spend because we're all locked down. Savings grew massively. Savings grew massively. And so now Australians have this war chest that even if interest rates go higher than now and if they remain there, even for another year, 18 months, people have so much of a war chest, the savings rate, 
okay? That means that, you know, there is not going to be a huge amount of foreclosures or defaults or mortgagee and possessions by banks. People don't need to sell their house. And you might think, well, the savings rate was kind of very thin here, right, PK? Well, really, you know, it's still very high. This is above 120 billion per, per quarter. And this just shows how much it's changing compared to these two lines. So people have a lot of wealth, but how does this relate to Perth, which is the topic of this video? Well, I already said that people in Perth have far more money than basically anywhere else in Australia. But this is the key thing that I think will just propel Perth higher and higher into the stratosphere of property prices. <laughs> Sorry, that's a bit of a hyperbole. But you know what I mean? China infrastructure investment growth. Everyone knows China is in lockdown recently. Australia's delegate Penny Wong, I think her name is, she went for a quick two-day visit to you know, patch up relationships between Australia and China. She went with a reporter and, you know, when they got there, you know, people greeted them in like full masks. I'm not just talking like one of those like plastic masks, but proper like as if you're going into a nuclear facility, that kind of uniform. There was no one on the streets in Beijing. It was just still like just completely deserted. This has been going on for months and months and months. Why is this relevant? It's relevant because every time China goes into some sort of economic crisis and needs to build its way out of it or, you know, bust its way out of its kind of lackadaisical GDP growth, what it does is it spends money. It spends money on infrastructure. After the global financial crisis, China's infrastructure spend investment growth year on year increased by more than 54%. That's this red line here, sources Bloomberg. Massive, massive. What that meant, what that meant was that they needed steel. For steel, you need iron ore as a key ingredient of manufacturing, and all the highest quality iron ore across the world resides in Pilbara, in Western Australia. And that really sparked the last boom in the resource oriented locations of Australia, i.e. Brisbane and Perth. Okay, so Perth kind of started tanking around 2013, 14. That's when the boom finished. As you can see, inf investment growth just really tanked. And therefore, around this time, Perth wasn't doing so well. But in this time, 2009 to 2013, Perth absolutely went gangbusters. I don't think that's going to happen exactly to that tune. But this red line needs to happen again because right now China is in all sorts. And they need to build to bolster or reignite such a large economy that's just going sideways. So I think that's what they'll do. That's always what they have done. They'll need to create massive bridges, massive roads, all this infrastructure for which they need, need iron ore. You know, Australia is always the wealthy country, the lucky country, and Perth is going to be the single biggest recipient of that. Last chart is OECD G10 2023 real GDP forecast year on year. And once again, this is from Bloomberg. But what this is showing is that Australia is likely to have the best or second best GDP growth next year of the biggest developed nations in the world. So for those people who are sort of saying, oh look, recession, global recession, I've proved in different videos in the past why Australia is different, we're always the lucky country. I've also proved in the past why even if a mining boom doesn't happen, Perth is far more diversified than it ever was. But check this out, don't lump Australia into the same category as the United States. Don't lump it into the same category as the United Kingdom, which is expected to have zero zero growth. You know, even though we have similar cultures, United States or the UK, we're a completely different economic beast, largely in part of the stuff that we have under the ground. And China is right on the precipice of needing that. Hopefully that was valuable, guys. I don't really care if you agree with me or not. I don't really care if you buy in property in Perth or don't. And I don't really care if you're interested in my course or not. All I care about is giving you unbiased, unfiltered, data oriented insights so that you can either choose to make money or choose to cast it aside. But if you do want to really level up 
in 2023, then I'll leave links below to my podcast on Spotify and Apple, Google Podcasts, and also my Facebook group with more than 25,000 amazing people who don't want to leave this information to the side. They want to consume it because the six inches between your two ears are the most valuable real estate you'll ever own. That is what's going to make you money, not anything else. My name's Fika. I wish you guys a very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Stay safe. Have a good one. And I'll see you on the other side. Catch you later. Bye.